Hi, my name's Abigail. I'm currently 35 years old. The story I'm about to tell you took place two years ago when I was still married to my low-life husband and subsequently still in the presence of my horrid mother-in-law who mistreated me constantly. This is the story of how I finally grew a backbone and got my revenge. I remember that day so vividly. I was already anxious about the hosting I would have to do as my mother-in-law was making one of her customary visits for coffee. I was already feeling anxious and my husband wasn't making me feel better when he said this. Babe, I don't think that this is working. What do you mean, honey? Yeah, I just don't feel like you're listening to me, even after I give you the simplest instructions. This isn't going to work. I'm so sorry. There was silence. I was anticipating those two words that were going to completely shatter me into an irreparable mess. It's over. Those words were ringing in my head over and over and over again. I was almost begging him to just outright say it. Rip off the band-aid, so to speak. That's how much I was anticipating those words that would have felt like daggers. I don't think that this tablecloth is going to work for when my mom comes to town. I told you to get the blue floral set, not the yellow one. Why don't you ever listen to me? You know, when you love someone, but you just want to strangle them, yeah, this was me at the time. Except I felt that love dissipating after every tiresome hour of living with my low-life husband. My husband had a funny way of toying with me. Some might even call it sadistic, but I just call it cruel. He would keep me on my toes, always on the edge of an anxiety attack with his empty attempts of leaving me. He would do this knowing that unfortunately without him, I would be nothing. I, in my early 20s, made the stupid decision to forego my dreams of becoming a cafe owner. I had it all planned out would be warm chestnut with an inviting ambience and the small quaint place would always smell freshly baked brownies and freshly brewed coffee. It was my dream to earn enough money to actualize this fantasy and my husband, then boyfriend, with whom I was madly in love, was supportive of this idea or at least I thought he was. You see, whenever I would tell him about my passion, he would share my elated tone with me, but he would quickly follow up with some suggestions, so to speak. Hey, yeah, that sounds great. Or we could opt for a simple lifestyle, you know. I always dreamt of living in the suburbs and coming home to freshly cooked meals every day. We would live in a big house with three kids and two dogs, one big one, one small one, and you wouldn't have to worry about lifting a finger. All you'd have to do is take care of the house, the kids, and me, of course. God, why I ever found such a statement endearing or charming beats me. Looking back at it now, I believe that I was bamboozled, folks, tricked and hoodwinked into believing that this man had any pure intentions when he said those words. I'll admit, my less than well-developed prefrontal cortex saw this behavior as cute. And once I heard that I was going to live a soft life in a big home with three kids and two dogs, one big one, one small one, I was sold. I loved the bakery idea with all of my heart, but I didn't realize that James was slowly chipping away at my independence and turning me into his obedient slave that would answer his every beck and call. I'm 33 now, and I realize I married a low-life man-child who still depends on his mommy for very basic things. Speaking of his mommy, this is the story of how I killed two birds with one stone and exacted my revenge on the two people who made my life a living hell for about a decade. Because believe me when I say that the apple didn't fall far from the tree when it comes to James and my mother-in-law. I'm so sorry, James. I completely forgot that you wanted the blue floral set. I've just been so busy trying to prepare the house from when she comes into town. It completely slipped my mind. I'm so sorry. Ugh, whatever. It's fine. I don't expect you to know much about these things anyways. I mean, you didn't even finish college, for God's sake. That stung, I'll admit. I was unable to finish college due to some financial reasons, and honestly, with my head full of those dreams of becoming a cafe owner, college was the least of my worries. Additionally, James had told me that finishing college was a complete waste of time since I'd be at home too busy with household duties. 
He said I shouldn't worry about it and that I should just focus on being a good housewife and training. And again, I fell for his words. He just always had a way of convincing me to go along with his plan. You're right, James. I'm so sorry for everything. What can I do to make this up to you? Well, nothing now, I guess. Just make sure everything is ready and do it quickly. Mom will be home soon and I don't want you to embarrass me this time around. I'm sorry, James. I promise. I won't do anything of the sort. Be seen and not heard, right? I remember. I'll be good, I promise. As you can probably tell from my responses, my self-esteem was completely shot. I had no self-love whatsoever and I was always believing the evil insults that James and his mother would hurl at me. As you can imagine, being belittled and degraded for approximately 10 years takes a toll on the psyche. You start believing what becomes commonplace practice. That fateful day, I finished setting up the table and waited patiently to greet my mother-in-law at the door. I was scared of James, but let me tell you, I was terrified of my mother-in-law. She was just like James, except subtler, more conniving. She would manipulate you into believing she was on your side, but in the next second, she'd betray you without so much as batting an eye. Nonetheless, I stood frigid with the fakest and hugest smile plastered onto my face, representing completely the epitome of the stereotypical traditional 50s housewife. My husband wanted a pristine, robotic-like Barbie doll to serve him. And at that moment, I realized that he got exactly what he wanted. This epiphany that I had was ill-timed, as at that moment, I was snapped back into reality with the shrill voice of my mother-in-law, accompanied by her long and lacquered nail snapping at me, begging for my attention and snapping me out of my trance. I swear to God, she's deaf, this one. Where did you find her, my sweet boy? Honestly, I don't know, Mom, but I guess I'm stuck with her. <laughs> How unfortunate. I quickly resume my role as the obedient and docile slave. I mean, years of conditioning will do that to you. And I proceeded to welcome my mother-in-law into the pristine conditions of my home. Ugh, what is that pungent smell? It smells awful, Abigail. Please tell me what that is. Um, it's just the apple pie that I've been baking for today's tea time. I tried a new recipe. God, why? Before I could answer, James interjected abruptly. I think she just thinks that she could still be a baker. Both James and my mother-in-law started cackling profusely. I was just glad that my children weren't home to see me endure this. I deliberately left them at my sister's house whenever the wicked witch would bless us with her presence. She would often ask to see her grandbabies, but I'd always come up with the excuse that they were at dance or football practice. It was during intense moments like these that I was particularly grateful for the love that I had for my children. Even though I didn't have it for myself, I adored my babies and I would never want to subject them to the cruel and harsh realities of their father and their grandmother. The reason why I was so grateful for this is that I could feel the stinging in my eyes and the hoarseness in my throat. I'm sure that my demeanor began to slip as I heard my mother-in-law say, Ugh! Are you serious about crying, Abigail? It's just some light-hearted humor. Honestly, grow up. You have three children, for God's sake. Imagine if they saw you right now. Pull yourself together, woman. Speaking of those angels, where are they? Oh, well, you know, Miss Adams was unwell yesterday, so she moved dance practice to today, and the kids couldn't miss it because the dance recital is coming up so soon. With a disgruntled sigh, she accepted the excuse and proceeded into our lavish dining room where the event would take place. Phew, another bullet dodged, and thank God I didn't burst into tears at that moment. I quickly ran to the kitchen to check on my apparently disgusting pie, but when I took it out of the oven, I was enveloped by the most pleasant smell. I reveled in that sweet and succulent smell, and for a moment, I was transported to what appeared to be another dimension. I imagined what my life could have been like, running around in my small, warm and inviting cafe, ringing up orders for loyal customers and newbies alike. 
and something funny would be happening between the patrons and we'd all giggle in unison at their fun. And the cafe would be filled with laughter and the sound of people click-clacking away at their computers as they find inspiration in this quaint space for whatever it is that they're writing. Maybe it was a new screenplay for the local theater or a dark romance novel or an article on the good news to share with the world. Unfortunately, my daydreaming season was cut short by the heavy fuds of my husband, skulking into the kitchen with a face full of discontent. I just wanted to make sure everything is ready. You're taking longer than expected. Remember what I said about embarrassing me, Abigail? Annoyed and irritated by his incessant need for something at all times, I responded by telling him that everything was almost ready and that he shouldn't worry. Perhaps it was the euphoria that I was feeling from my interrupted daydreaming session. I oftentimes escaped into my head when the days were getting particularly stressful. I believe it kept me sane all of those years, but I was feeling particularly brave. Despite being ridiculed just moments earlier about my baking, I wanted to share something. I battled the idea in my head for some time, fighting against the urge to blurt out my desire. And in a rare moment of clarity and joy, I overcame the demons that sought to muffle my voice. Just as James was leaving the kitchen to return to his mother, I blurted out. I want to try my new coffee recipe. The heavy footsteps stopped dead in their tracks, and my heart dropped simultaneously, realizing what I'd done. I began to berate myself mentally, verbally abusing myself to ready myself for the very real and very scary words that were about to tumble out of my husband's mouth. To my surprise, he marched right up to me, got in my face, and whispered angrily, I swear to God, if you mention that atrocious thing again, you will regret it. I'm going to make the coffee. Got it? I nodded profusely, agreeing immediately. Robotic, docile house servant, mode activated. I watched him huff and puff his way outside of the kitchen, and I proceeded to bring the food and drink to the table. Upon sitting down and saying grace, my mother-in-law and James proceeded to talk the day away while I sat and ate quietly. Surprisingly enough, my mother-in-law for some reason wanted me to engage in conversation. This was surprising as she normally didn't do this. My role was to be seen and not heard, remember? But today, for some reason, she sought to strike up a conversation with me. You know, I joke a lot, Abigail, but I really would have enjoyed seeing just how your business would have blossomed. Did I just hear that? Someone pinched me because this is not real. What? Are you being serious? James's bewildered look was all of the confirmation I needed. My mother-in-law was indeed being serious. Yes, Abigail, I don't joke all the time. I think you could have made a name for yourself. My eyes began to well up. I mean, this was all of the encouragement I needed. For such a long time, my dream was snuffed out, but now there appeared to be a glimmer of hope. Honestly, it's not even too late. You could start your business. We will help you. I swear to God, I must have been hallucinating because this simply couldn't be real. Could it be that the people who have made my life miserable for the past 10 years have finally changed? Suddenly, that budding confidence and courage began to spring up again, and this time it seemed clear that I didn't need to hold back. I decided to say, Actually, I was planning on serving you all a new coffee brew and recipe today. My eyes immediately darted to James, whose glare seared into my soul, but at that moment I completely didn't care. My mother-in-law's eyes widened with surprise. Really? James, why didn't you tell me that she wanted to make us a nice cup of coffee? Because she wasn't supposed to. Nonsense. You must bring it at once. Mom, are you being serious? Of course I'm being serious. Why would I joke about this? Well, because we always make fun of her. There was a pause, and my mother-in-law stared intently at James, her face turning red, and after some seconds of deep silence, she burst out laughing completely. Oh my goodness, I almost got you there, didn't I? Mom, what? Oh, now I see, you really got me. 
these two began cackling like little schoolgirls, and I was left stunned at that table, not believing what just happened to me. My head was pounding and my heart was hurting. How could she make such a cruel and unnecessary joke? I simply couldn't take it any longer. I ran into the kitchen, barely holding myself together. In the distance, I could hear James say, Oh, look what you've done now. She's crying. As much as this sounded like he cared, he said it in such a malicious and sadistic tone that I was choking up when I got to the kitchen door. I closed it behind me, heaving and sobbing while trying to regulate my breathing, but it was no use. The damage had been done. I began pacing in the kitchen. This had gone far enough. I wasn't interested in crying anymore. I was filled with absolute rage and ferocity. My anger was so hot that my tears streamed down my face in an attempt to cool the boiling heat that was rising within me. I had to do something, one thing. Even if it was the smallest thing ever, I had to get my revenge. At that moment, as if it was fate, the coffee maker was done brewing the coffee and my head snapped toward that direction. That was it. That was how I was going to get my revenge. I should also point out that my mother-in-law and James had a special china set that they would use for occasions such as these, but I was subject to using a basic mug. I saw them laid out on the kitchen counter. Two beautiful cups, one tinted with baby pink and the other with pistachio green next to a dull grey mug. The coffee maker was running, and from the looks of it, it looked to be almost complete. Sulking, I trudged towards the cups to begin to pour the coffee, when I noticed something in my designated mug. The two other cups were empty, but mine had something strange in the bottom. I took a closer look, and wouldn't you know it, I saw what appeared to be chili sitting at the bottom of my mug. That's so strange. What are these chili flakes doing in my mug? I inspected the cup further and I realized at that moment that James, and probably my mother-in-law, was trying to play a cruel trick on me. Once again, I began to seethe, wondering just when the torment would end. At the same time, however, I was relieved to have caught this beforehand. But at this point, I didn't know what to do. I could just throw out the chili flakes and drink my coffee and enjoy the look of confusion and disappointment that would be splayed across James's face. But I needed to do something more. And then it hit me. I frantically poured the contents of my cup into a pink tinted cup and began to fill the individual cups with the ready coffee. At that moment, I heard heavy footsteps coming towards the door, almost frantically. He must have remembered that he left his stupid prank out in the open, and since I was in here, he must have thought that I would see. But he was too slow. Just as he was opening the door, I finished pouring the coffee into the remaining cup. What are you doing? I switched around to meet a very angry-looking James, but my beaming and bright smile was juxtaposed against that. The coffee was done, so I decided to pour it into the individual mugs. Oh, I see, thanks, he murmured. There was a brief silence and it appeared, even if it was for a moment, that a look of sadness darted across James's face. Unfortunately, it was so brief that I might have imagined the whole thing because he quickly turned back into his old, monstrous self and began to bellow some more. You better not have tampered with the coffee. I told you, no one wants to try your disgusting creations. That's why my mom did that brilliant prank on you. He began to snicker all over again, and he walked up to me to receive the tray. He grabbed it from my hands, turned around, and began to walk back towards the dining room. But he stopped at the door, and he sounded slightly panicked when he said, Abigail, did you notice anything particularly different with the cups when they were laid out? Mm, oh, no, not at all. Why? Oh, no, nothing. I began to follow behind him not wanting to miss the debacle that was about to ensue. My anger and sadness began to dissipate, and it was replaced with complete schadenfreude as I awaited what was about to unfold. I sat down at the table, and my mother-in-law noticed the very alarming shift from being on the verge of tears moments earlier to being somewhat chipper. I simply couldn't contain my excitement. My mother-in-law began to suspect me, and with a cocked eyebrow, she said, Abigail? Darling, are you all right? Oh, I've never been better. Oh, okay. 
At this point, both James and his mother were suspicious of my behavior, so I had to tone it down. James and my mother-in-law began to add sugar and syrup to their respective cups, and I was waiting patiently for my turn to add sugar to my cup, as well as keeping an eye open for everyone's reaction to what was about to happen. I watched as my mother-in-law put her pink-tinted cup to her lips and let the chaos ensue. She took one big swig, big mistake, and her face re-emerged, twisting and contorting in disgust. James, what's wrong with this coffee? What do you mean, Mom? It tastes awful. And what is... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! My mother-in-law's face got redder and redder. It looked like she was swelling up, honestly. Her tongue was out, panting like a dog, and she was tearing up. Why on earth is my coffee hot? It's coffee, Mom. It's supposed to be hot. No! My tongue is on fire! My mother-in-law stood up from the table, pacing around frantically and crying about how painful it was. Some of you might call me sadistic, but honestly, I reveled in that agony. And don't worry, it wasn't too bad. Everyone needs a little spice in their lives. At this point, James gets up to try and calm his mother down, but she was gunning for the milk and glugging it all down. With both of them baffled about what just happened, I decided to take action. Oh, James, silly me, completely forgot. I did see something different in the mugs. I noticed that my mug had some flavor enhancers, and as much as I appreciate you kindly adding them to my cup, without my permission or consent for that matter, I simply did not want them. But I thought that maybe, just maybe, your mother would enjoy them much more than I would. And so I decided to dump the contents into her cup instead. I hope you enjoy the coffee. It's my special blend. Both of them were looking at me with utter hatred and disgust. You, you, you worthless, hopeless, slimy little ingrate. Somehow, even though my mother-in-law was yelling at me and James looked like he wanted to snap my head off, I was completely fine. I think my body and spirit at that point were completely drained of any empathy and love to give to people who made it their daily mission for the past 10 years to inconvenience me and make my life miserable. It was time that I got my revenge and honestly, it felt so good. Of course, both James and my mother-in-law were hurling insults at me, but as I mentioned, I was quite calm during all of this. I calmly stood up, headed up to my bedroom, packed an overnight bag for myself and my children, and proceeded to walk to the door. As I tried walking back downstairs to face the mess, I was reminded of just how miserable it truly looked. My mother-in-law was trying her best to soothe her sore tongue, and James was looking very afraid, a face that I have had for a long time. The irony didn't miss me, trust me. I approached the scene and took a deep breath. You two have made it your mission to destroy my life. For the past 10 years, I enjoyed your petty comments and downright narcissistic and manipulative behavior. But enough is enough. I have more worth in my big toe than both of you have combined. I'm officially done with you, James, and I'm going to stay with my sister until I have everything figured out. And of course, I'm taking the kids. Have the day and life that you think you deserve. Goodbye. And with that, I managed to march outside of the house with my head held high, leaving the debacle behind me and subsequently tuning out the hurtful words they were spewing all the while I was gathering my things and leaving. I'll admit, during the drive to pick up my kids, I broke down. My emotions were the purest form of bittersweet. Feeling such a conflicted array of emotions was quite overwhelming. I was happy because my spirit was finally at ease. I left a very toxic household that I could no longer endure. Additionally, I was also obviously upset because the realities of the situation began to dawn on me. What if she presses charges? Is she okay? Maybe I went a bit too far. But I pushed those thoughts away. She was a grown woman, and honestly, she just needed some milk to deal with the pain. Well, you might be wondering what the aftermath looked like. Let me tell you. The way my life has been changed for the better is quite miraculous, and dare I say impossible. But every day I'm grateful for the position I'm in. 
After that debacle, I stayed at my sister's house with the kids for a couple of nights, all the while avoiding calls from James and my mother-in-law. I was not ready to speak with them. Eventually, though, I did have to face the music and I returned to the home that held so much pain for such a long time. And James and I sat down to have a discussion. Just as you'd expect after figuring out what type of person James is, he proceeded to blame everything on me, saying that the reason why I was so unhappy was that I didn't get to fulfill my dream. A dream that he snuffed, by the way. And that I was taking out my frustrations unfairly on him and his mother. I, with my newfound strength, interjected, rejecting his pitiful attempts at gaslighting me into believing that I was the problem. My mother-in-law eventually emerged from a nearby room, approaching me angrily, but I calmly informed her that if she hadn't made my life a living hell, as well as birthing the literal spawn of Satan, she wouldn't have gone through what she went through. Karma is real. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. I do hope you find peace with yourselves and stop being such angry and vicious people, but honestly, I highly doubt anything will change. Two months down the line, I filed for divorce, and because of the years of evidence that showcased the emotional abuse I went through, I got full custody of the kids. I started dating again, and I eventually found a genuinely kind-hearted man who treated me like a queen and treated my children like his own. It also didn't hurt that he was rich, and he was all for supporting me and my unfulfilled dreams. Two years later, I was married to a beautiful man in an even bigger and lovelier home with my beautiful children and three dogs, as well as my cafe called Chestnut, right down the street from where we lived. I honestly couldn't be happier. And the last I heard of James is that he got a DUI, as well as some other small charges for disorderly conduct and inappropriate public behaviors. Let's just say that people don't want to do business with someone who has a tainted record like that. And so his businesses started crumbling. In regards to my ex-mother-in-law, I'm sure she's avoiding all chili as much as possible. <laughs>